was at a, a, a conference, and there was a message shared from the passage that we're going to look at this morning that, that radically impacted my life. And so I want to share that passage with you. And it may not be a relationship issue, but I know all of us experience detours in life. And so we're going to look at a very familiar passage this morning. If you have your Bible, I want you to turn to Exodus chapter 13. And in Exodus chapter 13, we, of course, find in this familiar story of God raising up Moses to deliver the people of, of Israel from the Egyptians. And you remember they're, they're in Egypt because way back there had been a famine. Joseph, who had already been in Egypt, second in command, his family came to get food. They ended up moving to Egypt. But over the course of time, they became slaves of the Egyptians. And for 400 years plus, they served and lived as slaves in Egypt. But God hadn't forgotten them. Now, 400 years is a really long time. And the people began to feel like maybe God had forgotten them, but he had not. And he raised up Moses. And you remember the story. Moses is reluctant at first. He doesn't want to do, doesn't feel adequate to do what God's called him to do. But he steps up to the challenge through God's grace and his help. And the ten plagues occur. And finally, after the tenth plague, after the death of the firstborn, Pharaoh finally relents and allows the people of Israel to leave. So that's where we're going to pick up the story this morning. So Exodus chapter 13 and we're going to look at verses 17 and 18, and then 21 through 22. And we'll jump into chapter 14 in a few moments. And this is what God's Word says. It says, When Pharaoh finally let the people go, God did not lead them on the road that runs through the Philistine territory, even though that was the shortest way from Egypt to the Promised Land. Now, right away, there's something that you need to know and to look at and to notice. It says, God did not lead them on the shortest pathway. Now, I don't know about you, but when I'm going somewhere, I want to go the shortest way. How many of you are like that? All right, I want to know the most direct route. I want to know the fastest time. I want to get there. But God did not lead Israel on the shortest route. Look at verse 18. Well, actually, let's back up and finish verse 17. It says, God said, if the people are faced with a battle, they might change their minds. Because going through the Philistine territory meant a lot of hostility. So God led them in verse 18 along a route through the wilderness towards the Red Sea. And the Israelites left Egypt like a marching army. Now jump down to verse 21. It says, The Lord guided them by a pillar of cloud during the day and by a pillar of fire at night. That way they could travel whether it was day or night. And the Lord did not remove the pillar of cloud or the pillar of fire from their sight. The first thing I want you to see and to notice this morning as we think about detours is that God leads His people. And if you're a follower of Christ, if you know Jesus is your Savior, something that you can know and trust and bank on is that God is faithful to lead His people. And He will be faithful to lead you. Listen to Psalm 31, verse 3. David says, for you are my rock and my fortress, and for your name's sake, you lead me and guide me. David said, for your purpose, I know that you lead me and you guide me. God has a great purpose for your life, and he will lead you and he will guide you. But in his leading and in his guiding, he will take you on detours. And those detours will not always be easy. They will not always make sense. Sometimes they will be absolutely frustrating. And sometimes you will be tempted to wonder if God knows what he's doing. But I want you to know this morning that he does, and he's faithful to his promises, and he will lead you and guide you. But as we see in this text, God knows that often the shortest way, the quickest way, is not the best way. And you're going to have to realize in life that the shortest and the quickest way is often not God's way. And that can be absolutely frustrating to me at times. Do you ever find that frustrating? All right, I like short, I like quick, I like results. But God has purposes in the detours of life. And he knew at this point that Israel was not ready to go on the shortest journey. 
There was so much that they did not yet know about him. They had been slaves in Egypt for 400 years. They don't have a Bible to read. They have heard stories about their ancestor Abraham and how God had interacted. And now, after so many years, they, they, they see God at work. They've seen his miracles. They've seen their protection that he gave them from the plagues. They see the pillar of cloud. They see the pillar of fire. But there's still much that they need to learn about who God is. They weren't ready to go to the promised land. They weren't ready to face the Philistines yet. And so God led them through the wilderness. And there's going to be times in life where God leads you into a wilderness, into a place where you really can't see your way out, to a place where it really doesn't make sense. But there, I want you to know and understand that God is taking you on a detour because he has a purpose in your life to teach you something, to show you something, to prepare you for what he has for you. Now, a lot of times when we're doing that, we feel like maybe, maybe I'm not doing something right. I know for myself, one of the questions I kept asking is, am I doing something wrong? You know, why would God not want me to get married if all my friends are engaged or getting married? Why would God not want that for me? And God, you're, you've called me into ministry, and I don't think I can do that without a wife, and I had all these things, and then I said, well, am I doing something wrong? Am I, am I going down the wrong pathway? And what I want you to realize is that if you're following God, you're not on the wrong pathway. If you're following God, you're not on the wrong pathway. He may just be taking you down a detour. And even though he does not give us a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day, how many of you think that would be cool if he did? All right, would that not make things simpler? You know, if you just got up in the morning like, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do today. Oh, oh there's the cloud. I'm just going to follow him. You know, that would be great, that would be easy, that would be simple. God doesn't do that today in our lives, but here's what He does do. He has promised to be the same God, faithful to lead you if you'll trust Him. And some very familiar verses to all of us, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 say this, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek His will in all that you do, and He will direct your path. And that's a promise that you and I can claim. It says if we trust God with all that we are and all that we have, that's our heart. And we stop trying to figure it all out. How many of you like to try to figure it all out? All right, a lot of us do. And God says there's going to be times in life where you can't figure it all out. And there's going to be moments where it doesn't make sense. And what God's doing doesn't seem to fit with what you would want or choose or desire or even what seems best. But I want you to know something. He knows what he's doing. And he wants you to trust him. The Bible says that we have to walk by faith and not by sight. And that without faith, it's impossible to please God. One of the greatest things that we can do in our walk with God to obey him, to trust him, and to love him is to say, God, I trust you enough to follow you even when it doesn't make sense. So what do you do when you're on the detour? You seek his will. You keep doing what's right. You keep following God. You keep obeying. And he will direct your paths. If there's one thing that you kind of take away this morning and remember, I want it to be this. That God knows the way through the wilderness. Because here's what I know. If you're not on a detour right now, guess what? There's one coming. I promise you, there are detours coming. Now, from God's perspective, they're not really detours at all. They're part of His plan and His purpose. But from our perspective, they're like detours. And when you get there, you need to remember that God knows the way through the wilderness and that you can trust Him. Maybe you've been asking God to do something, to give you something. Maybe you've been praying and seeking Him. And you're saying, you know, I'm trying to do what's right and I'm trusting God. I've been praying about this. Maybe it's a family situation. Maybe it's something else in your life, but God's just not seeming to move. And He's not seeming to lead you where you think you ought to be. And you're getting frustrated. And I want you to remember, God knows what he's doing. He knows the way to the wilderness. And if you feel like you're going in circles, it may just be that God is preparing you and teaching you for what he has next. And you're not ready yet. And here's the thing that frustrates me so much. I'm not pushing the wrong buttons. But this. God is never in a hurry. 
God is never in a hurry. I wanted to see if you are going to get that. God's never in a hurry. You know, sometimes we get in such hurries in life, don't we? Have you ever been running late and felt like you were in a hurry? All right, we've all been there. Some of you are addicted to running late. You love it. You had planned for it. You love the adrenaline rush that comes from running late. But God, he's never in a hurry. Because his plans are perfect. His timing is perfect. He sits and reigns on the throne of the universe. And he's never panicked. He's never in a hurry. He knows exactly what he's doing. And he wants us to trust him. God called Moses to lead the Israelites to the promised land. But before that, he allowed him to spend 40 years wandering in the wilderness, growing and learning, recovering from past mistakes. God saved Paul, called him to preach, but for three years he had to prepare. He wasn't ready yet to begin his public ministry. The important thing in life is not that we can see where we're going but it's that we have our eyes focused on the God who knows where we are. You see, there's going to be times in life where you just really don't know what's next. And you don't know where the detour is leading. But you don't have to. Because God knows, and that's enough. And if you'll keep your eyes on Him, and your focus on Him, and your devotion towards Him, He will be faithful to lead you and to guide you through that detour. I promise. It requires faith to navigate the detours of life. Look in chapter 14. Just have your Bible open. Exodus chapter 14. And look at verse 10. <laughs> What's happened earlier in, in, in chapter 14 in Exodus? It says that God spoke to Moses and he told him where he wanted him to go. And it really didn't make sense because where he was leading them to a place where they were going to be trapped geographically. He led them towards the Red Sea where there was a massive body of water in front of them. He led them to a place where not only was there a massive body of water in front of them, but there was going to be a mountain on either side. And then Pharaoh's army is going to come because Pharaoh starts to think, you know what, why did I let all these people go? Why did I let my workforce leave? I think I'll go take them back. So in chapter 10, or in chapter 14, verse 10, that's where we pick it up. Israel is trapped by the Red Sea. Pharaoh is approaching with his army, and it says this. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and they saw the Egyptians coming after them. And the Israelites were terrified, and they cried out to the Lord for help. And they said to Moses, Is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you took us to die in the wilderness? They're panicked. And I think we can identify with them this morning, can't we? I mean, can you imagine if you're there camped out by the Red Sea and there's a mountain over here and a mountain over there and the army of Egypt is coming after you? All right, that might be a moment to panic. Just saying. <laughs> and they're like, why, why did we leave? Verse 12. They say, well, first of all, they said, why, what have you done by bringing us out of Egypt? And they say, isn't this what we told you in Egypt? Have you ever been there where something happens and someone else says, I told you this was going to happen. <laughs> and so that's where they're like, I knew this wasn't going to work out. They said, you should leave us alone so that we may serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm for the Lord's salvation he will provide for you today. For the Egyptians you see today, will you will never see again. For the Lord will fight for you. You must be quiet. Because God had already met with Moses, and God had already told Moses, look, I'm leading you in a way that doesn't make sense, but it's so I can show my glory and my purpose to you and to Egypt. When God leads us on a detour, it's easy to think he's made a mistake. The people of Israel, they were like, this has been a big mistake. And sometimes when you're on the detours of life, you feel like God has made a mistake. That God's been unfair or unkind or even unwise. And it's easy to think that maybe going back is better than going forward. And that's kind of where the Israelites were. They're like, let's, it would have been better just to go back. It would be better to be a slave 
in Egypt than to die in the wilderness because they took their eyes off of God and they put their eyes on the problem. And so Moses has to come and say, you need to get your eyes back on God. You need to get your focus back on him because he will make a way in the wilderness. In every direction that they looked, there seemed to be an impossible barrier. An ocean, a mountain, an army. And sometimes in life, you feel like that. You feel like you're trapped by your circumstances. You're trapped by the things that are happening in your life. And it's at that moment that there's a direction that you have to look, and that is up. And that's what Moses was reminding the people. He says, you need to look up. You forgot to look up. You looked in front of you. You looked on the side. You looked back, but you didn't look up to look for God to see what he will do. Moses said, Moses said this, verse 13. He says, do not be afraid. Just stand where you are and watch the Lord rescue you. The Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. The Lord himself will fight for you, and you won't have to lift a finger in your defense. God led them to this dead end on purpose, to show them who he was and what he could do, and what God did for them, he will do for you. And so just very quickly to tie things up, there's three things that I want to give you to help you when you go through the detours of life. Three things to remember. Number one, because God will lead you on detours in your life. We talked about that. So number one, remember that God is in control. When you're on that detour and when life doesn't make sense and what God's doing doesn't seem to fit with your plans and your dreams and your desires, just remember that God is in control. You know, we often look at our world and we think, wow, everything's out of control. Everything's a mess. There's problems everywhere, and, and we can get discouraged and overwhelmed, but we need to remember that God is on the throne. He rules the throne of this universe. Several years ago, I heard a pastor who was questioned, and he, they said, what's the world coming to? And he looked at them, and he says, the world is coming to Jesus. Because in the book of Revelation, it says the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God is on the throne. He's in control. He has a plan. He has a purpose. And no matter what the circumstances of your life may bring, you can trust him because he's in control. And just like Moses told the people to be quiet, sometimes we just have to stop and to be quiet. Psalm 46, verse 10 says what? Be still and know that I am God. Sometimes you just have to stop and remember that God is God. And that there is no panic in heaven, only plans. God never panics because he is in control. He always has a plan. Remember God's in control. Number two, remember God has a plan. He has a purpose for everything that he does. Everything that he allows in your life has been filtered through his hand. And even the difficult circumstances that you go through have been filtered through the hand of your heavenly father who loves you more than you can understand or know. It's remember God has a plan. Remember that he does know the way through the wilderness. God knows the way. You know what God did for Israel when they faced that impossible circumstance? He made an eight-lane highway through that ocean, didn't he? He caused a strong east wind to blow all night, and the sea parted, and the mucky bottom of the ocean turned into a dry ground. And Israel walked through the Red Sea. God made a way for them. Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 27 says this. Jer God is speaking to the prophet Jeremiah. And he says, I am the Lord your God. Is there anything too hard for me? You see, in life, we will face things that are too hard for ourselves. There are things that we just can't do. But nothing is impossible with God. And I think sometimes we lose sight of that. And I want you to know, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing or will face, God is bigger than what you face. Nothing's too hard for him. Number three, not only remember that he's in control, not only remember that he has a plan, but remember to keep looking up. Remember to keep your eyes on Jesus. Because here's the thing. You can't miss God's will for your life if you have your eyes on him. 
Because I know for you at your age, one of the things that you should be thinking about is, what is God's plan for my life? What does He want to do with my life? What purpose am I here for? And I want to promise you, if you have your eyes on Jesus, and you're following Him with all your heart, your mind, and your soul, and your strength, you will not miss God's will for your life. That's what Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 is all about. If you trust Him with all that you have and all that you are, He will be faithful to direct your paths. You will not miss His will. And even if you're on a detour, and even if you're in the wilderness, and even if it make, doesn't make sense, and even if it's not what you planned, keep looking up. What's the purpose of that detour in your life? That dead end in your life? It's so that God can reveal Himself to you in a way that you've yet not yet known Him. If God had not led Israel to the dead Red Sea, if he had not led them to that place where he could show them his power, they would have not known how great he was. They would not have ever experienced his glory in that way. And so trust him, follow him, because God knows the way through the wilderness. Let me pray for you this morning. Father, we, we come before you this morning, Lord, thankful that you are faithful to us. I thank you that your word says that your mercies are new every morning, and great is your faithfulness. And God, I, I pray for each person that's here this morning. Lord, some of them I know, and some of them I don't know very well. And for most of them, I don't know all about their life story and their life situation. But Father, I thank you this morning that you do. I thank you that you know every detail about each person's life. You know exactly where they're at. You know exactly what they're going through. You know exactly what they're struggling with. And Father, I just pray for those that, that may be on a detour right now, and, and they may be feeling confused or wondering what to do and where to go and how to handle it. And God, I pray this morning that you would help them to see you for who you are and to see their lives the way that you see them. And Father, I pray that you'd help them to remember that you're in control, to remember that you have a plan, and to remember to keep looking up no matter what. And God, I pray that as you lead us through detours, God, that you would reveal yourself to us, that we would learn and grow, and God, that you would prepare us for the purpose that you have for our lives. And God, I pray that you would give us the strength and the encouragement and the help that we need. And Father, I ask this in Jesus' name.